Uh, what's up? It's me, your friend Aspiring Spike. Welcome back to my Shark Typhoon. This morning, in my hour of meditation I, <laughs> that I always do, I realize today is going to be the last day of June. And what's one letter away from June? That's right, John. Will we have a slight edge against the field? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> Will our type plays a clean living up with squeeze up close wins? Yes. It will result in a better than uh, a, a, a better than a Gen 5 0 only the greatest benevolent cloth is protector of all Gregory players knows for sure. Thank you, Chess. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for uh, Banyo for the 20 month resubscription. Uh, Mac Zodiac with the new fresh Twitch Prime that has two notifications for some reason. It's kind of weird. Uh, okay, so. Uh, deck, 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 deck. Uh, this is a John Midrange deck that is trying to utilize the power of Collected Company and Earth and Unearth to break the mana symmetry of these cards, ideally getting six mana worth of cards for Coco, three mana worth of cards for Unearth, playing 14 three mana creatures. Uh, I've worked a lot on these kind of John Collected Company shells in the past, but for the most part, they have been rev revolving around sacrifice synergies for interaction. Goblin Bombardment, Blood Gas, Mayhem Devil. This has been the formula that I've played in the past this is a formula that I, I felt is okay but uh there is you know some diminished card quality when you play those cards there is definitely the, there's definitely some ability to get out grinded when you have these high synergy based decks or you have some lower range to your draws so the idea here is you're just playing good cards while still having the uh, mana breaking symmetry cards of collected company on earth to win the grindings and then you are playing Four Fulminator Mage in the main deck for your interaction against big mana combo decks. I, th I think I think giving you a great matchup in those uh, those matchups, and uh, you're going to side them out a lot of the times in the more grindy matchups, which is I think fine uh, in order to really so solidify your win percentage uh, elsewhere. That's the idea. Been play tested and been liking it a lot. A chest of the 27 months. Pre praise cloth this to you too. Okay, um, I do have. Croaks in the deck. That being said, I think I'm just going to get my one of Basic Forest. Uh, I don't have any Besages in the main. This is the only land in the deck that doesn't doesn't tap for Croaks. Uh, if I wasn't playing Croaks, I'd be playing a Besage too. Uh, we have 28 Coco hits, so the meme is dead. Okay, maybe we just attacked first. If we hit a three drop, attacking first is better. We did hit a three drop. It is Violent Outburst. So we'll see if we're playing against uh, Rhinos or Living End, but I definitely also liked uh, the main deck Endurance against Living End. I've liked the main deck Fulminator Mages in this matchup too. <sighs> Maybe my opponent has a uh, Fire Ice. Kind of, a team or Triome usually means uh, Rhinos and not not Jund. Although I guess it could be Creativity. Creativity's been like randomly popular lately. Let's see, play this. So yeah, I've been liking the deck a lot. Uh, yesterday, yesterday was a weird day, but it was pretty productive. Uh, I was able to get three like interesting decks prepped for today's stream, slash Friday stream, slash maybe Monday. Um, and then uh, my best friend brought his dogs over because they're going to Mexico to visit some of uh, his wife's family. And uh, <laughs> the dogs are not getting along with Athena at all, so... <laughs> um, they're coming to pick up the dogs later today, actually, but it was a very hectic night. I was up all night breaking up fights and uh, <laughs> facilitating facilitating the peace. I think I like Crooks over, over Endurance here, although it's kind of close. I do typically like uh, Crooks uh, in this matchup. How is Jessica Lewis feeling the better these days? I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, they can look chaotic. Yeah, it definitely was. Like each dog is individually really good. The problem is like, so one of the dogs is a mini Aussie. Another one is a. I'm trying to remember. The other one is a like lab. It's a lab husky mix. It's a husky. It's it. It looks like a lab, but it just it screams like a husky. <laughs> it's a really weird and bad combo. <laughs> just screaming like husky, looking like a lab. Uh, okay, didn't play around the endurance that well here. It's gonna have to be okay. Probably not the end of the world. Uh, and so the Athena just wants to play with the mini Aussie nonstop. Yeah, let's get Fulminator Mage she's in Pyromancer. And then the mini Aussie doesn't like all the attention, doesn't like being have you know, Athena's all up in uh 
all up in her face, and she's like fighting Athena, and then the the husky mix is getting real defensive, and everybody's just arguing with each other, and Athena just do also doesn't know how to back off. Athena doesn't know how to back off at all. Where uh, where the, like the other dogs are like trying to set boundaries, and Ath Athena is just incapable of respecting boundaries. It's really always been her biggest problem. Zines with Twitch Prime, appreciate you. Alcrim with eight months, appreciate you, appreciate you. Okay. Um, playing against Rhinos. I think on the draw, I'm going to cut both Endurances and a Renin 6 going down to the classic 26 hits so I can play four Thoughtseize. Rhinos, not that common of a deck these days. I feel like we're probably pretty good on the play against them if we could have a draw like that. Uh, the draw, I'm not sure it's going to be as good. Esther with the 19 months, love you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I wish I probably should have commentated more on the game, but very good, very strong start. I've been liking this deck a lot. The, you know, this is something I kind of meant to go over in the deck tech, but, you know, I've I've played a lot of this style. Is this hand too slow on the draw against Rhinos? Probably. <sighs> okay, we probably have to keep this. Um, I've played a lot of this, you know, I've played a lot of decks with Unearth in the main and then Fulminator in the sideboard so that you can unearth your Fulminator's post board. This has been like a formula I've really liked over a lot of different shells um, in a lot of different decks. And, um, it, and like the Fulminator Mages always shine so much in these Unearth shells, especially in the Unearth Collected Company shells. In sideboard games, they just shine so much. And uh, I think with like the general lack of good interaction, if you don't play them, I think I, it just it just makes sense. I think to be main decking them. Oh, bro, thank you for the eleven months. Appreciate you. They finally started to come down. People, well, that's good. That's good. I've, I've been up all morning, uh, wrestling the doggos. Okay, we we don't we have a third land. A chest. Thank you for the five pack. Appreciate you. Deck tech for whoever posts the next list. All right, we'll see if anybody takes you up on that. Free deck tech. Up for grabs, courtesy of a chest. Why don't people play? Why don't people play Coco no Mo? I mean, it, it, Coco's always been a card that has a like a really high deck building restriction, right? It's a card that requires you to have like a weird density of three mana creatures, and I think that three mana creatures got worse when they printed Counterspell, and a lot of them, you know, it's kind of easy to go over the top of them sometimes too. Here looks like the land destruction is maybe not going to be that good. I, I do want to draw a land though. Okay, cool. I mean, my hand, my hand with multiple Fulminator Mages. I think these just needs to start doing this. Maybe I'll get kind of lucky and draw another land next turn. I can go Fulminator and Unearth Fulminator while them still not drawing a Cascade spell. That would be really ideal. <laughs> da Vinci, jumping on it. It's been a lot of weekend turning gr 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 green Grixis. Um, I feel like I feel like either you've deck teched for something similar to this in the past, or um, I've I've seen you know Grixis mid range or Grixis shadow splashing for just Riveteer's charm. Um, I think I think what it is is we've been like there's there's some chatter who's like who's into it and has been uh, talking about it lately. I can't remember who it is. I think this turn I'm going to go Unearth plus Goyf. I can't remember who it is. I don't know. If, I can't remember if it's you or not. Uh, I think it's interesting. I'm a big. Uh, I am a big fan of Riveteer's Charm. It's a card I like a lot. Um, I will say that I feel like it's certainly not my deck building style to do something like this, though, where you're sacrificing what is like a really good clean Grixis mana base. And you're playing one stomping ground to splash a two of, and you're not playing like any ancient grudges in the sideboard, and it's all—it's also not like you don't have other good grindy options in the, in the death shadow deck either. You know, you could play an extra Kroxa, you could play dress down. It's not like you're, like suffering on your card quality at all when it comes to, uh, deck construction for Grixis Shadow. Um, 
That, that being said, I, I, do, I do really like Riveteer's Charm. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is if you're going to splash for Riveteer's Charm, I feel like I would have won at least three. Like, if you think that this is a good enough card to splash for in Grixis, I, 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 I think it should be more than just a Dota 2 of, like at least a 3 of, over like, you know, first push, first bolt, or second shadow, uh, or third shadow, sorry. Uh, I also maybe want to play a third green source. One is probably fine. One is probably fine. Uh, but especially with only one basic and you have... Yeah, you can play a seventh Shockland as like your... I think you probably should have eight fetchables anyways. So yeah, just having like a... Uh, a uh, Overgun team is probably good. I think the Charm Slot is needed for Terminate otherwise. Um, I think that that is a fine take to have. Uh, I think that that... Makes some sense to play Charm over over Terminate if you feel like you, that's all you want is to hedge against Murktide, but... Um, yeah, I think Charm is good. I just don't think it's just like... I don't think it's worth splashing for just as a two-of. Like, either Charm is so good that you want to play three or four, or it's not It's not good enough to splash for it, and you just play Terminate, in my opinion. And so... So I, I guess that's my take on the matter. I don't know if I've got any... Any other... Strong opinions besides that. I would also, I, I would say I would be very likely to play Ancient Grudge in the sideboard if I was already splashing green and, and shadow, though. Um, although maybe that just competes with the the dress down spot too much. That could be the case. So they didn't uh, cast the Bone Crusher, so they probably did draw a Violent Outburst. Oh, just bounce? Okay, it's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to play the Ancient Grudge over. Maybe, like, maybe an Explosives, maybe the Needle... Yeah, I like the needle of the board. I've been playing a needle of the board of uh, of Rakdos uh, for like most mostly for the Red and Six decks, but I I do like Grudge enough that I would maybe consider cutting it. Was maybe supposed to ping the Borrower last turn. Any chance I played Affinity recently? Uh, I have actually been playtesting um, some of like the old Affinity list I was working on back in Neon Dynasty lately. Uh, I, I, I still, I was, I, I was most, most specifically, I've been messing around with the, the mono blue Urza affinity lists. Could try to pull one up in a sec, but I always really liked that, uh, that version. I'm kind of surprised that I stopped playing it or it just like, you know, didn't pick up at all, but it was like, it was really performing well when I was playtesting it earlier this week. You have a force. Gabroth, thank you for the 26 months. Appreciate you. If I drew a green source, I would probably go red and plus Goyf here, but I didn't. Okay, Fulminator Mage. She's in Pyromancer. I think I'm discarding Hierarch, Fulminator Mage. And then... I think I am supposed to try to keep them off of Fury. So I could go after their second red. Weird match so far. But it stops me down to five, so now I'm dead to another burn spell. Uh, hopefully I can next turn go Ren plus go wave and not die to another burn spell. So again, that's just kind of some loose thoughts. I think it, I think it is fine to splash for charm. I think it's probably not correct though. How's the Simic Flash Pioneer deck going? I haven't played Pioneer since that stream. Uh, I haven't... Uh, Tune the list anymore, although I, you know, I did leave that stream thinking that there was plenty of room for improvement. Okay, so they're just gonna oh, pitch fury, kill me. Fair enough. Fury, pitch fury. Is there a side guide for Boros for Trios list a few days ago? Uh, there. I just finished writing it last night. It should be up today or tomorrow on Channel Fireball. Okay, game three on the play. Game three on the play. No Veils. Uh, in this matchup, Veil only stops Force of Negation, and I don't think that stopping Force of Negation is so relevant that I want to bring in Veil. Where do I download MTG on PC? If you type in download MTGO, it should be like one of the first links. Did Spike forget Lightning Skelementals? I did not. I am actually aspiring Spike known Lightning Skelemental hater. I think that card sucks, unfortunately. I know that there are some people who really like it, Caleb D specifically. I've always been, like, really underwhelmed by the card. Subs the bounce. That's true, yeah. That's true. 
Hmm. Stops ice. Turn to grief. Now, this is Rhino's not playing grief. I'm down for one, I think. I don't think I want two. Have you ever just felt whelmed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say I felt whelmed. Once or twice in my life. <laughs> Stops ice more like cantrips when they heist. Well, it's like counter cantrip, which is like pretty good. And if they're icing a creature, you know, if they ice like my Tarmogoyf. But that's true. They, they, they just should have the usual ice and land instead. B underscore since. Tier 3 for 27 months. The Pog Champ himself, huh? Thank you, thank you. Alright, on the play. Let's just Fulminator Mage them to death again. <laughs> this hand definitely seems more than capable of doing that. Swiss so Spear is legal with Popper. I think this is Grave Injustice. We're not currently playing Popper. Dude, Popper, Popper is looking kind of good. Not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know. At least kind of interesting. Uh, I watched the... Uh... Oh, sorry. I watched the uh, Professor video on Popper. Ooh. No way. <laughs> Dude, Gemstone is such a nasty card. If they can kill my Ragavan and then Cascade before I bring out the Fulminator, good beats, I guess. So they just play a tapped Stomping Ground. You will live. Ragavan, the nimble pilferer. You're going to live. Too soon. Too soon. Oh, I would love to cast that Charlotte's Agent, but I'm going to Fulminate them. Too soon to say goodbye. You usually preach around 30 creatures, just tuning in, by the way. <laughs> uh, I don't usually preach about 30 creatures. Uh, I think that you can even go as low as 26. 26 is, like, bare minimum, but ideally you're going to have um, 27 as the minimum. We have 28 here with the four grist. 28 is, like, certainly plenty. Another, another thing, too, about, like, modern Coco decks that I think is very small, but, like, when people always reference, like, the Frank Carson article about the number of Coco hits you need... In your modern decks, I think I probably should have got a stomach ground actually. Um, people always reference the Frank Carson article, but I I do think that the fact that you're gonna like thin your library like three times before you uh, cast a Coco a lot of the time does like does allow you to go down to like twenty six and be okay. That being said, like 27, 28 is more ideal for sure. No, you cannot suspend the footfalls off Ragavan, unfortunately. Okay, so leaving the fetch lands up, trying to avoid more Fulminators, I think. We are uh, seasoned Pyromancer rich here. Yeah, we're playing four on Earth in the main deck. Our, our deck is like, you know, so many three drops. On Earth is like really, really good effect. Anonymous Gifter, gift to give sub to Welcome Clock. Awesome, awesome. I'm here for Popper. If I start to writing articles like Mingu, I totally read them. Yeah, it would take it would take me a while to get into the the format. <laughs> it would take me a long, long time before I'm as versed in it as Mingu is. I, you know, th this is definitely the case too. Where if I'm if I'm going to be playing a format on stream, uh, with the exception of like brand new set releases, I need to. I, I always like to just play them off stream first to get a feel for them and start to formulate some opinions, since we can have productive and meaningful conversations rather than the stream just being spike plays magic for the first time okay so my opponent almost definitely has violent outburst let's cast a season pyromancer hey destructive tron i got the sticky note it's it's right there it's right, right there i don't know if you can really see it but it is there it's next to esther's head Oh, I forgot the seven. <laughs> forgot the seven. Interesting. Do you think Living Wish could be printed into modern? That's a fun one. I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think I think that a lot of cards like Living Wish seem pretty cool. Then you just end up realizing, oh wait, that's a. Uh, 
pretty big buff, buff to Titan, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, we got a lot of tokens. I'd be pretty surprised if my opponent doesn't have Violent Outburst. They only have three cards in their hand, though. They also are down one Crashing Footfalls. Thoughts on Dubious Challenge and Pioneer. Um, if you were going to treat a big creature into play for four mana and Pioneer, it's probably going to be Creativity as the best option. Uh, I've been... So, someone in chat recently suggested playing um, Indomitable Creativity in Pioneer... But your uh, your targets are Zinigos the Reveler and Emrakul the Promised End. And I thought that that was pretty cool. Where you have to creativity X equals 2, but then you deal 26 Trample Flying Protection from Instant Damage. Which seems... I just I just feel like that sounds pretty good. Um, okay. Block, 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 block. So if they have Fire Ice here... We get so unbelievably blown out. Oh, I guess that's not true. No, because they can't. They can because they have both two twos here. They they only get to save one right now. I think this is fine. Um, okay, they don't have it. So I thought, yeah, I thought that that was interesting. And then you have Valakid Awakening to shuffle the cards away. And so I've kind of been working on. Um, so they, my opponent has spells in their hand because they've they've missed a, a land drop or two. So. If I minus this Grist, let's see, if I go cast High Arc, attack with Ragavan, I minus the Grist, I put my opponent to one life. Do you see any of those brewers of Pioneer using Tibble's Trick and Cheat Wheelbulk? I've seen them, yeah. Uh, they look pretty cool. That was me. That deck was on your Twitter, I think. Uh, I, I I saw I saw it from a commenter in chat. Um, I also don't think I've even seen a list as much as I've just heard like the idea of using those two. But I've got you know, there's a few different creativity gels. Okay, so now that they fetched, if they block the Ragavan, we win. If it's not endurance, no, it's endurance. Fuck. <sighs> At least we didn't lose the Grist, I guess. But I do remember, Da Vinci, last time this was brought up, I do remember you coming in the chat and, like, taking credit for it. <laughs> but but uh, uh, I, as far as I know, I haven't seen any actual list. No, 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 last time, no, last time, last time someone brought it up, you said that that was your creativity package, but you also thought it wasn't correct to play, I believe. I believe you said that that was your package, but you, you didn't think it was good, which I thought was weird. <laughs> but that's how I remember it. <laughs> Alright, one card in my opponent's hand. Probably a Fury. Okay, let's go to tap land. Oh, do they not have another untapped red? They might not have another untapped red. Emmy plus uh, five mana is in a Ghost of the Reveler. I think Dash Ragman's good. If they have Violent Outburst, then they can either double block away for let the Ragman get through. Like a minus Gris post combat. I was playing World Spines and a Ghost, but didn't play it since Wander Odawara cards. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what you said last time. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I just thought it was funny. You'd be like, that's my, that's my deck, but I also don't think it's good. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna keep this on the draw here. I want to play this deck with one of Clothis. I had a one of Clothis for a little while. I just haven't been that happy with it, unfortunately. I think if you wanted to play an effect like that, dude, we got four Fulminators in the main. Do you have, don't have any in the hand here. Um, I do think if you want like a like one like more grindy card, like I'm closer to playing like one Eternal Witness than I am to playing uh, one Clothis, unfortunately. Because it'll be good. Yeah, I think I think it's chances too. I think your critiques are pretty fair though. That uh, Wandering Emperor and Odawar are pretty good against the deck. Any updated change to Esper food list? Um, not any, like super official. I think I want to Grist here because if they play, it's now it's an Eldrazi. So if they play Smasher or no, if they play Smasher, it's really good against the Grist. Maybe I should season Pyromancer, and then I'll discard two Grists. Draws. Uh, can't think of the six months. Appreciate you. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, with Esper Food, I kind of want to play 
a Dark Slick Shores in the sideboard, and then against decks with, like, against, like, Grixis Shadow and Murktide, I want to cut, um, dude, oh, it's the Prison deck. Okay, so I can still maybe lock them out with Fulminator Mage. I need to draw land, though. No land. Dang. Um, but I can maybe lock them out with Fulminator Mage and Ultimate Grist to win. Yeah, Grist of the Graveyard is a creature. What about Bone Shredder? We're considering playing this list for Omnath and Murktide. Grist is your, like, Grist is your Bone Shredder effect, and I think it's a lot more powerful. Yeah, this deck is really cool. They're gonna have Needle at some point. Yeah, that's likely. Gonna be hard to beat these Mystic Forges with like not having third land and not having full Nader in hand. I can't cast this through the chalice. I'll just go to game two. Okay, so we'll bring in our Collector Oof, <laughs> our Besages, <laughs> our Maguses, uh, our Outland Liberators. M probably not the Thought Seizes. That might be over sideboarding. But we're definitely, uh, definitely ready to go here. Let's see. This is 30 hits right now. I feel like I'm cutting my goifs. 26 hits is like bare minimum. Yeah, still two subs for deck tech. Do you think Tron will get any good cards if Brothers War other one? People say these ask me these kind of questions a lot. Uh, the only answer is I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the set. <laughs> uh, if I said yes or if I said no, like both of those would just be baseless speculation. Besides, I guess, like, the only info we have is there's probably going to be artifacts in this set. Where seems good. Should be able to outgrow a Smasher. I don't think they're playing Smasher. I think they're just playing Seer, like, the prison deck. Maybe cut one lane if you had to besage you. Uh, people say this a lot, but, like, the reality is, in this matchup, you're almost always just channeling besage you. Um, besage you is, is, is mostly just a spell that you can recur with your Renin Sixes. Is is it Murktide the modern version of Pioneer's Rectus Midrange? I think it I think it is. I think it's pretty uh Oh, I've been I've been saving this tweet for a while that Rakdos Midrange is mid, but I just haven't had the <laughs> I haven't found the moment to uh to tweet it. Please no steal. Where's the bombardment? <laughs> so you don't accept donation decks anymore, I always like that. I always uh, hated doing donation decks. I will never do donation decks again. Because I hate you and I hate uh Magic the Gathering, and I'm just in it for the money, which is why I don't do donation decks anymore. Uh, Monkey Knife, think of nine months, appreciate you. I appreciate you. Everybody else in the chat can go to hell. T Bomb, think of a Twitch Prime. Feels good to finally let this all out, huh? Been have meaning to say this for a long time. Traz, think of it 20 months, appreciate ya. Oh, also donation decks are coming back. Gotcha! They're never coming back! <laughs> I came into everyone and checked your house that kind of day today, and our, yeah, very quickly became that. <laughs> Man, losing to the Tron deck with four Manic Fulman would be pretty rough. <laughs> Hi, did you spike? Yeah, this is what happens when I, like, get a day off in the middle of the week, and I have, like... Like, I, I, got, I got very little sleep last night, because... My, my, my friend's dogs are over, it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of dog drama going on in the house at the moment, but... Uh, besides the dog drama, um, <laughs> just, like, the day off in the middle of the week, I, I get so much rest, and I get, uh, time to, like, prep lists and, like, be really happy with the lists and stuff, and it's just, like, it's just, like, good vibes in general. Okay, so I think we pass, flip the Ellen Liberator, and then Coco in their upkeep. Um, and I don't know, I'm kind of thinking... I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'll just, like, take a day off in the middle of the week on the... Ooh. Magus is kind of awkward. 
I guess cowards can't block warriors, huh? I'm kind of thinking I might just start taking a day off in the middle of the week, and then, um... And then, like, just still doing five days a week, four regular streams, and then the tournament on the weekend. Or maybe just, like, as-needed day off in the middle of the week, right? Maybe, like, two, two a month or something. The flexibility is really nice. Friend dogs are over. We don't get to see them. They are, uh... The dynamic here is pretty bad, <laughs> to be honest. Um... Like, uh, Athena is just, like, always at a 10 when other dogs are around. She's very happy and excited to see them, for sure. But uh, she's just constantly at a 10. And one of the dogs is, like, half the size of Athena and the other dog. And because of that, like, is trying to tell Athena to give Athena space. Athena will not do it. She's always at a 10. And then the other dog, her brother, is, like, being very defensive. And it's just... It's a bad situation, so the... Uh, the dogs are unfortunately uh, someone else. Someone else is going to be dog sitting them this week. My 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 friend and his wife are going to uh, to Mexico to visit her family before uh, they have a baby. Okay. Can they cast another spell? Flip this. Even if they can, they're just dead on board. I haven't. I don't think I've ever triggered this with the attack before. It's the miniosity causing problems. It's, I'm not, I don't think any single dog is to blame. It's the... The dynamic is just bad. The dynamic is just bad. Uh, ooh, Dark Souls Stream Wednesday sounds awesome. Turn 3 Magus with the ability to recur or besage you if we draw it. I think we have better hands. Like this one. Um, okay, so I do think I want to get Forest Swamp. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. No individual dog to blame for the dog drama. Just a lot of, uh, just not the best dynamic. And it, and it was it's also like it was also like the situation was deteriorating, you know, just more and more heads are getting bumped. Love to see some Elden Ring again. I haven't played Elden Ring since I my first playthrough. Oh, I started playing uh, Persona Five yesterday actually during my uh, during the MTGO maintenance. I got a few hours in. Uh, it was like very very slow start, but um, I was always a big fan of Catherine back when I was like eighteen. I thought that game was pretty cool. Uh, it's made by the same people, so I, I I don't really know much about the series. I just remember I liked Catherine when I was like eighteen. Okay. Royal, I got yeah, I got um, I got I got the Royal, and I'm on the PS5. I don't know if that's different, but you know, it was a Catherine. It's a good one, yeah, for sure. Me and my friends in high school, we played the shit out of that game. And then I've never played uh, Catherine Full Body. I've, I've like, I've watched like <laughs> Let's Plays though, because <laughs> I, I like the first one so much I wouldn't know what happened. Um, I'm, f I'm familiar with the the changes to the the new one. Oh yeah, Esther played the uh, the original one too because I just had it on 360. Okay, they named the Alien Liberator, but we can potentially still flip this. Although this turn, I think I'm just playing Ragavan Oof. And hoping. Oof is very good against them. Yeah, there's a casino heist at the beginning. Huge spoilers. Yeah, Oof's in the chat, everybody. <laughs> Hope you're up to date. You're Jungi in psychology. Of course I am. <laughs> of course I am. Ask me any question about Jungi in psychology, and I'll pretend not to see it in the chat. Okay, Mystic Forge. They can't tap it. They can still cast their spells. Another spell skite. I think that was off the forge. And they plus the card so they can block with the forge. Can I draw a Fulminator Mage? Chalice on one, huh? 
Well, I'm gonna definitely prioritize, I guess, flipping this Outland Liberator. <laughs> I can draw the Fulminator Mage. Can't cast it. But if we're just gonna hold for this turn, huh? Just hold for this turn. Really hope my opponent... My opponent can almost definitely cast two spells. It's... Because they can get a spell from Karn and they should have to have anything off the Forge or Hand. My opponent's getting a Witchbane Orb. It's kind of a weird one. It's kind of a weird choice here. I don't see any, I don't see any curses over there. My opponent said oops, Smith's click. That makes more sense. The PayPal will be in shortly, opponent. So let's destroy the Mystic Forge. Try to kill the uh, Karn. Yeah, if you don't play Witchbane Orb in your deck, though, this could never happen, so... opponent really has no one to blame but themselves. Okay, not sure if... I'm not sure what they were gonna supposed to get there. Maybe, like, Slundering Titan? Um, I think I'll keep this on the play. I would Mulligan on the draw, but... We got a Coco, got the lands to cast it. Don't need to overthink anything, huh? Yeah, I need to I need to move the stack. I know it bothers people sometimes. Pew pew, ten months. Appreciate you. Yeah, I've been playtesting this deck a lot. Uh, I've been winning a lot with it. I'm trying. I can't remember what my exact records are. I know last night I was three one drop. I think I have like a four one and like maybe another another X one drop. I can't remember how many wins. Okay. Um. No more Coco, but we do have a Grist for next turn. Perhaps they pick orbs of warding or witchbane orb, <laughs> maybe. Bog of the 15 months, space koala, great username with the seven. Okay, so we're playing against creativity. Although Gris is actually really good against creativity, I found. Oh, I'm probably supposed to play Red Source this turn. But um, you just like, if, if they're on the Archon version, which almost every version is on at the moment, uh, it's just kind of easy to sack a token and then kill the Archon with a minus. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to switch the stack as soon as I <laughs> as soon as there is something on the stack. Go, I won't yield. I won't yield so that I can move the stack. Be able to focus for more than like two seconds. Tech tech for I may. Just guy control. Just guy Lotus Field. Um, so if I was playing Just Guy Lotus Field right now, which uh, I am like. Kind of consider YOLOing for a paper tournament this weekend, to be honest. But uh, if I was going to play the paper tournament right now, then I would, I think, be on 4 Chalice main deck, where in my mind, the decks to beat at the moment are very much... It's very much like Living End, Murktide Regent, Hammer Time, Burn, and uh, Four Color Omnath. I think even with four Chalice to the Void main deck, you'll slide them out post board. You have a pretty good matchup against four color Omnath, and you you really and I think going hedge against all the other decks with four Chalice main. In fact, without the four Chalice main, the burn matchup's like unwinnable. I'm sorry, that's hyperbolic. Too much hyperbole and magic, I guess. But I, I would play the fourth Chalice of the main at the moment. Is what I'm getting at. Probably cutting the uh, third ending or fourth ending or third March. I'm not sure which. Probably probably third ending. Or sorry, for, for, for 3rd March. And you can maybe sideboard another one. But I, I would also be interested in playing a decent number of Tails in, in the sideboard too. Uh, like maybe maybe even like 4 Tails End, 2 Force, or find a room for the 3rd, or 3-3. Three, three. But tail, I think at least the 3rd for the, like the 4 color matchup when you're cutting these Chalices. And some of the white removal seems nice. So probably so four Chalice goes main, that probably just becomes Tails in, cut the third bar third march of the main, third march on the side. Um I think no other proposed changes is how I'd play at the moment. 
Okay, just like we drew it up. Archon, just not that good against Grist, I found. Obviously, they have, you know, more Archons and stuff. Um, here, I am I supposed to escape Kroxa? I think I'm supposed to Coco. Since they missed a land drop here, and we have a bunch of Fulminators in our deck. <laughs> 28 hits, by the way. And I didn't play my land first. Barf, city, population, me. There's a full major, I guess. <laughs> ah. I'm thinking of YOLOing Lotus Field for this paper tournament spike every turning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have it mostly sleeved up, too. I have Esper Food completely sleeved right now. I might play that. I might play Rakdos. Yesterday I was thinking I was like locked into Rakdos, and today I'm like. What if we just YOLO just Sky Lotus Field? And I should probably be playing one of these decks on the stream today, to be honest. But, um... I also have some cool decks on the stream today. Or for stream today. Okay, Reflection's pretty scary. Guess probably shouldn't have made that attack. Um... <laughs> Bolt wants me to play Rakdos. Surprise, surprise. Oh, also the Fulminator Mage was like... We were just like one or two cards away from another hit. Have I tried Fable the Mirror Breaker in Modern? I have. I think that it's very good in creativity decks, just like it's good in creativity decks in Pioneer, of course. Uh, I think that it is... I've kind of, like... I've yet to see... A, a, like a mid-range list with Fable of the Mirror Breaker that that was outside of that's playing more than like one copy of Fable and I'm like this is a good choice to play the Fable like for for the most part <laughs> for the most part I see Fable in these mid-range lists and I just almost every time feel like I see a card that would be better than maybe I should have minus the Grist killed the kill the reflection. Yeah, but, but I feel like I basically always feel like I, I, I see a card that would be better than uh, what people are actually playing. We can play Disgusty with Lotus Field of Modern. I've tried it. I think it's, like, a bit too clunky for Modern. I do think it's good in the Pioneer version, which I need to revisit some. Um, but the, the Pine... There's no ally Fastlands in Pioneer, and I really want to play Seacrim Coast. <laughs> so, don't worry, chat. I've tweeted demanding... Demanding that wizards immediately make ally fast lands legal in uh, Pioneer. So that should happen any second now. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill this reflection. Then Ren and Six Kroxa. Very fine to get rid of th three of the fetch lands. Want to keep one of the cocos for a Rin and Six ultimate. Although maybe keeping that rag. Yeah, I guess I should have exiled the Copper Line Gorge or the Ragavan for a Grist ultimate. <laughs> this is not Gen Saga. <laughs> we played plenty of Gen Saga lately. I like they do Brothers War, let new players learn the history and get back to your Frexith Allied Fastlands. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Pioneer's been a format for almost three years, maybe like a full three years now. It was like, I remember I went to a Pioneer PTQ or, PT, or GP like before COVID started. So it's it's just been too long. You know, it's it's been too long without Fastlands being in the format, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, they should they, they should have already been printed. Pioneer started 2018. Yeah, I, I don't know when I can't remember when in 2018, but but again, it's it's time for action, wizards. It's time for action. Is there a place for Teferi creativity decks, or is largely replaced by Fable? Um, the most common versions are these Grixis lists, but that's also because. You know, Nasif is just such a such a god and such a babe, and uh, and uh, <laughs> people people are just copying Gabs list at the moment. Um, 
I, I do think that this ver this list is good. I think you can also play the four color version. I think both lists are good. I don't think that there's, um, I don't think that it's clear that one or the other is just like strictly better. I'll currently go to first paper monster with cards I have, budget burn, any affordable upgrade changes I make, considering category of cards I own in addition to deck list. Okay, if you have supposed to look in the chat, I will take a look. So let's see, I guess I saw that you did. Um, give me a second. Escaping Kroxa is one of the most mentally taxing tasks you can perform on Magic Online. It requires a very delicate hand and years of training and uh, better eyes than I have. Dude, my eyes are just totally deteriorating. It's bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, but I, my, my, and my glasses are supposed to be like they said two weeks, and today is two weeks. So if I don't get my glasses like today or tomorrow, it's I don't know. So I'm just gonna have to give. I probably play fourth skull crack in the main over third shard volley for the mono red um, burn list. I also feel like. Uh, for a really affordable utility land, Ramunap Ruins makes a lot of sense to me as a uh, as a good budget land. Okay, so do I minus the Scrist to kill Reflection? I think I do, since if they if they get an Archon and they Reflection, it's just literally game over. Um. Yeah, I think the the list generally looks pretty, very good here. I do I do think Boma Courier is the next best one drop or next best creature to play uh, if you don't have Mishra's Bobble for Dragon Rage's Channeler and you don't want to play Eidolon. If you do have Mishra's Bobble, you should be playing Fetchlands Bobble, Dragon Rage's Channeler. But I know that increases the price a lot, so this is probably fine. Um, yeah, in the main deck, I think I would just play. Oh, I think with no uh, actually with no. With no canopy lands, even with Ramunap Ruins, I would probably play 17 lands. I would probably play 17 lands. So maybe play the fourth Skullcrack, keep the third Shard Volley. Cyborg looks very clean for a budget list. I don't I don't think I've got too many notes. This looks very similar to... Maybe I would play fourth Torment Script over third Exquisite Firecraft, though. Max with a 10-pack. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. That's the fourth Archon. Why is our basic land game so we can this deck? I picked I handpicked all these arts. <laughs> I like all of these. Please no make fun no make fun of. No make fun of. Yeah, Serene Blaze is still good for sure. Uh, obviously fetches would be an upgrade, but yeah, Ra Raving Up Ruin seems like the like a clear budget upgrade to me. But I think you've done a good job uh hammering out a good budget list there. So I think I want to cut the Kroxas for endurances. Veil seems good. Or maybe Veil's not good. Hold on. They usually do play Thoughtseize, and Veil does counter a Archon ETB. But maybe that's a bit too narrow. I feel like I also want these Thoughtseizes, and it's kind of hard to play like both Thoughtseize and Veil without like and maintaining a good number of Coco hits. I think I'm interested in cutting like a Renin 6, two Veil, two Tarmogoyf, and then. Click new submit. Thoughts on the green white hate bear coker deck and pioneer. I, I haven't seen a list that I think is perfect, but I do think that the archetype is good. I don't know. This is also kind of like the problem with pioneer that I have and everybody has is like a lot of these brews, <laughs> a lot of like the rogue decks, and a lot of the, also and like every tier one deck too. Like no list looks perfect. <laughs> I don't know. It just always feels like everything's missing something. Is it Magus very good too? Uh, they usually have a lot of red removal, so I'm, I'm kind of worried about it dying to like Lightning Bolt, but you could be right. I'm going to keep this. Uh, my opponent is not going to have, I repeat, not going to have a Crab on turn one. They are going to have a Ley Line, which is pretty frustrating. Very good against my Ren and Six. Yeah, Manifesting, no uh, Crab. The moment I think Pioneer is one of the most healthy formats. Yeah, I actually, I actually agree that Pioneer is in generally good shape at the moment. Um, man, the stupid Ley Line. Okay, I'll just play second Ragavan and pass. Kaito! Oh man, imagine if I had a land to play Kaito here. 
mono complaints <laughs> this game. I mean, if I get to connect with Ragavan twice, hard to be too upset. Maybe I can go Spyro, discard both Ren and Sixes, play Hierarch or something. Okay. Yeah, I think Pioneer's pretty good. Um, I got, I've got a few brew ideas that I'm kind of messing around with. Yesterday, I was like, I feel like yesterday was like the most productive modern brewing session I've had in recent memory, which is always like, you know, the most satisfying for me to have a good modern brewing session. Okay. Um, I probably need to save, yeah, I probably need to save the Grist for for an Archon. They'll almost definitely take the trade of Shaman for Ragavan though, and then I can Fulminate. Probably hitting the Steam Vents. What exactly does a brewing session entail? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, usually I just start up by looking at the mirror and I just like smear lipstick all over my face and I say, you're going to build a deck in modern today? Or my hand is going through this mirror. And, uh, you know, then it's just kind of like a lot of coffee and a lot of like staring at the screen until something clicks. I uh, got a seeing redemption. Okay, I'll see the next card. Shook up with the 31 months. 31 months, wow. Thank you for the resubscription. Um, I think I'm just going to attack with a Spyro, hold up Endurance. Is that how we got the Ground Roof Brew? That's how you've gotten all the brews, all right? <laughs> That's how you get all the, all the brews. Oh, Endurance! I'm <laughs> sorry. A little scuffed. Endurance! <laughs> Actually, uh, I have Esther chain the refrigerator and I say, don't let me eat anything until I 3-2 uh, <laughs> with a deck I've never 3-2'd with. And she says, I think this is a bit excessive and probably not that productive. And I say, you, don't, you just don't support me and my methods, sweetheart. <laughs> Please, I need support right now. Yeah, usually, yeah, I mean, the lipstick often acts like a Rorschach test, and I can see the, I can see the splotches making different uh, decks and color combinations. If I had to sing Asma, would I sing the whole name? Uh, yeah, I would. Um, it's kind of been like a long-standing game of cat and mouse, actually, where people try to redeem, like, <laughs> and, and hope I hit Asmo for the next card, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm getting pretty close to learning how to pronounce it, though. Getting like, I feel like I'm getting very close, chat. <laughs> like, I know the end, it's like, I know Asmo, and then it's the Cal the Car. But I, the, the, I, I have a hard time bridging the gap between the Cal the Car and Asmo. Okay, I'm gonna concede. 2-1. We're up against the Yorion deck on the draw. Kind of hard to mulligan. I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, I, I, I've always, I always see the new Remy songs. <laughs> I'm always right there. Easy clap. Although step two of the easy clap is my opponent not having a Ren and Six. But they've got 80 cards. They do play 80 cards. What are the chances they have a Ren and Six on turn two? Helix, what in the world? Oh, the Utopia sprawled the base. I mean, they always do the basic, but feels bad in my Fulminator Mage deck. Are they Niv? They have to be Niv, actually, right?
Fulminator off the Coco, then unearth the Fulminator, please. Also, opponent just puts Yorion in the hand, too. Manifesting it. <laughs> it's a verdict? I don't, I don't know. Omnath, probably. Please just put Yorion in your hand, opponent. I've, er I've earned this. <laughs> Okay, this is somehow better, unless they have ending. They are floating a white, and they were really deliberate with their mana tapping. Okay, a Fulminator or land off the top then, is what I'm hoping for. Land, thank you, deck. Double Fulminator, let's go. Manifesting. Dang it. <laughs> I mean, Put's got three cards, I guess. I shouldn't have wished for so much. I should have just wished for one Fulminator. Double Fulminator was just like greed personified, huh? Then they found their Omnath. Got a fetch land? No fetch lands. Thought that that was like, you know, Omnath 101. All right, let's see if we can kill the Teferi. Then I can unearth the Endurance now, but I think I'd probably rather try to like maybe chump block with Spyro or something and then uh, unearth that. There's the fetch land. Yeah, yeah, wind traders are, yeah, yeah. It's, it's usually one person, so wind traders may be a bit deceptive, but usually it was one person in the standard or vintage queues trying to intentionally queue into themselves and just, like, you know, farm free money. Um, which made for a really miserable experience for people trying to actually play in the queues, usually. Yeah, they're definitely nip if they're playing Vindicate. Pros and cons of this list over Junsack. Um... Way better big mana matchups with the main deck Fulminator Mages. I also think this list is better at outgrinding the, uh, like, Murktide, Grixis Shadow, those style decks. Okay. Really needed that graveyard opponent. And so, I actually kind of feel like... I feel like this deck has an overall better matchup spread and has a more consistent, even range of draws where you're, like, less reliant on... Drawing synergy based cards, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I didn't think they were gonna block. I will go ahead and cycle my unearth now. Glyph's still large, not necessarily in charge. Point has no cards in their hand though. But they do have, they do have exactly enough to Yorion draw four. Alright, Yorion is dumb. Going to game two. So to play against Niv probably doesn't play too differently from the, like the normal four color Omnath matchups. Um, where I was thinking in that matchup, I just wanted to cut endurances for Magus. Not that Magus is amazing against them, but I think like with the Fulminators, I mean, I guess it's awkward Fulminator can't kill basics, but I thought I me mean, it, it's at least better than endurance. Thought it might be a good uh, game plan. I think the Kira and Armageddon deck was pretty sweet. Any adjustments to make too? I, I liked I liked the list. I thought it was pretty sweet too. We had a pretty good record with it too. Less on Earth for Besage you. I don't think I, I guess I guess against Utopia Sprawl, maybe you do want Besage you. Um on the play. So I have to text about dog stuff. Mulligan. Keep. Put back Goif. So obviously awkward that they have a basic here. I'm gonna use my mana on this Fulminator Mage. Although, sorry, I was supposed to get Swamp. This is the second time I think I should have gotten Swamp and just <laughs> forgot I brought in the Maguses. 
is a good thought seize. I'm open to hearing what you would bring in in favor of thought seize. You know, sideboarding in this deck is a little weird because you need to maintain a density of company hits. I'm also like not really of the opinion that thought seize is particularly good against Omnath, though. I, I think that it has its moments, but it's a bad top deck, and like discard is historically bad against the Orion decks. Okay, so they probably ping the Hierarch. They do that, we get to attack the Rin though. Was there a Swamp in the list? There is a Swamp in the list. Could have to be shaved for a couple of thought Thoughtseize. I think like post-board in these matchups where Fulminator Mage is such a big part of your plan, you can't cut any unearths. But that is a suggestion, though. Although, I don't know. Like, was it just a mistake to play the Fulminator? I think I had to use my mana. <laughs> Man, Magus is definitely not looking too good right now. No, I, think, I don't know how many basic forests they play. I'd imagine it's two. They probably have... Yeah, they've got the mountain. They are playing Rockerick. It's interesting. I do have um I do have a <laughs> stop on it now. I do have Gris in the deck to kill this. Alright. Twenty-eight hits. Probably just gonna be two two in this league. <laughs> I guess I made a mistake by playing the Fulminator. It is just always, you know, so obnoxious that the five color deck gets to uh, just fetch all basics at perfect mana. Uh... Gonna mulligan the one lander. Keep this with like Mountain, I think, on the draw. Four color Yorion Genesis and bring and bring to light pile and pioneer. Uh, not playing a Valky in your pioneer bring to light deck is probably a mistake. I think that bringing to light for Valky in pioneer seems like to be at least to be like one of the most like interesting and powerful things in pioneer that nobody besides um. Nobody besides the 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 Niv decks are doing. Okay, another good Fulminator Mage matchup. Not that there's uh, any in my hand currently, I guess. But with the with the Grist, I do have the potential to maybe like mill one over and unearth it back at least. Oh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Maybe would have preferred to have that be my draw step for next turn, but uh, definitely very happy to you know, kind of time walk my opponent with the, the unearth next turn for one mana. Um, yeah, it, this, these, these kind of decks are also like kind of like the most miserable to deck tech for too, where you're a Yorian deck, your pile is just like, you're, you are, you're just a pile of, like, generically good spells. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a pile of generically good spells in Pioneer. And you just have, like, millions of options to, um, <laughs> to replace all of these cards with. And it's, it, 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 it this is, these, these are the kind of, these are the kind of decks that really make my, uh, my brain hurt, to be honest. Um, okay, Rin and Six kill Hierarch. I can dash Ragavan and Unearth. Okay, not anymore, so I can minus Grist to kill this. Um, oh, a bit of lag here. But you know what? You know what I mean? Like th these these deck techs are just like they're so tough to do. I, I, I can give you some general thoughts. Like, I would probably play four Omnath Locust of Creation. Um, I, I also I also feel like it's weird to me that you're playing, like, a lot of, like, random one-ofs. Ulama, Cosma, Terra of the Peaks, Kenrith, Ugin. 
when you're playing Genesis Ultimatum, not the Sultai Ultimatum. So, like, I, I don't know, like, when you're ever going to bring to light for Terror of the Peaks or when you're ever going to bring to light for Kinrith over, like, Gargaroth or Golos or Omnath. It kind of, it kind of seems like, to me, you have, a, you know, the very classic problem of... Um, the very classic problem of having too many tutor targets in your deck with tutors. Uh, this is a very easy problem <laughs> or very common problem that deck builders have is... They're playing a tutor like Bring to Light, and then you're only playing three Bring to Lights. I would I would play four if your deck's if you're gonna play Bring to Light. You don't have one of your best tutor targets, Valky. I think you're playing too many. I don't I don't like Omen of the Hunt very much. I th don't think it's a card I would play. Um, I I would like almost never play Burn Down the House as a as a uh, as a tutor target here. Like you already have your two Supreme Verdicts. I don't know when you're ever gonna burn down the house. I'm generally not very high on March of Otherworldly Light either. I think that that effect is not that good. Okay, so my opponent has one card in their hand. Seems pretty nice to be able to snipe that and hope that I can dodge a Primeval Titan for exactly one turn. But yeah, you you have you have way too many tutor targets that are like generally underpowered. Cloth, I wouldn't play Clothis. I wouldn't play. I would maybe play Golos, Elder Gargrathus Fives. I want to play Kinrith. I want to play Terror. I don't know why Coma's here as like just random draw card. Like the the Ulamogs are also like like playing Ulamog and Ugin as like cards you can hit off your ultimatum, which you're only playing three ultimatum is also weird because you're only playing three ultimatum, and um like they they're probably worse than like more copies of omniscience too. So I just. I just don't know. There's a lot going on here I, that I, I feel like needs to <laughs> be changed. I, I don't know where to start because it's the list is so all over the place. I think Extraction Specialist is underexplored in Modern Pioneer currently. Um, I would even say maybe it's overexplored. <laughs> like, I, a lot of people are playing it in, like, these Pyre of Heroes humans lists, right? But I actually generally feel like the card is worse than Renegade Rallyer in most of the lists that I see, to be honest, so... I mean, being white instead of white green is relevant, I guess. But that, that's that's kind of my, my my take on the, like, humans extraction specialist decks. <laughs> if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna keep it 100. As I try to do. Um, it's so good in Pioneer Humans. Yeah... I, I'm not, like, I really hate that when you bring the creature back, it can't attack or block as long as the specialist is in play. I really dislike that. And I know that Revolt is hard to turn on for a Renegade Rallyer, but if you're going to pyre into it, you can Revolt, you can attack or block with it, can bring back, um, you know, in modern non-creature permanence. The VG Land, thank you for the five months, appreciate you. Assuming 3 3 and Bring Light was for the Fae of Wishes board, fourth copies on the board. Yeah, I, I don't know. The, li the list is just, that list was very confusing. Oh, sorry. I'm actually going to play Hierarch here. So if my opponent has Ren, I can Ragavan to Ren. Can't specialist just get back something on odd empty board. I think I want to try to either get them tapped out next turn. I can go Fulminator plus Unearth next turn. Or hit something off the Ragavan like a Ren in 6 here. Traction Specialist work well, creatures don't put back into combat. Play modern DNT and they used to get back clean and arbor. Yeah, I don't know. I, again, I just kind of feel like Renegade Rallyer is better than Extraction Specialist in a lot of decks. I know that it's, you know, Revolt is a restriction, Two Colors is a restriction, uh, No Life Link is a restriction. Getting back any permanent is nice, and, that, and the creature being able to attack and block is really nice. And at the, at the very least, I don't know. I, I've, I've seen a lot of these. A lot of these specialist decks, and I just, I'm just like a little underwhelmed by, or I don't know, it's fine, it's fine. I don't think that you need to play a lot more of the card, though. They do have the Ren and Six, which I can hopefully kill with Ragavan, okay. Less likely if they're going to plus, I guess. Especially getting back Charming Princess some gas, yeah. But it's just like... I don't know. Just Renegade Rallyer. I, 
think I'm supposed to attack my opponent. Feels kind of close, though. Then I really wish this Arid Mesa was in the graveyard, because I think maybe just unearthing to stop them from being able to get anything back with Renin Six is kind of nice, but I think I should just pass. <laughs> yeah, maybe run both. Rally just doesn't trigger in Pioneer, though. Yeah, maybe you're right. I feel like with, um, but like if the idea if you're trying to Pyre of Heroes into it, it's kind of like, it's maybe better. You, you could be right, though. Okay, so they did, they did pop the Relic. Um, maybe I was supposed to Fulminated Mage in their upkeep to tax the mana a little bit. I could have been correct. Can this deck swap company with Vile? Can this help the Cyber Plan? Um, I, I, I feel like Collected Company is way better than Aether Vial in the stack, so I guess I'm not that into the idea. It would be it would also build the deck differently. You wouldn't play so many three drops, but I I, I have recently built like sacrifice decks with Vile instead of the the Coco. I think that that's you know somewhat reasonable. Gonna run them out of mountains. Yeah, they just get the back with Ren and Six is just obviously the the frustrating part of this. Buy some time though. I had a game like this actually last last night in my testing, and they were able to like. Get back a lot of lands with Ren. I was just able to buy enough time though with play with this. Plus they're up to a whopping six loyalty. If there's one thing Ren and Six has always had, it's just too much loyalty. Um well I hate it, but I think I have to just attack the Ren and Six with Season Pyromancer to help to unhearth unearth the season pyromancer instead now trying to find like grist or something maybe we should be playing more grist as more the fourth grist as an answer to rin post board in this matchup what if unearth was put into pioneer hmm. i guess we'll see if my put has nothing uh i don't know Un unearth is a very strong card but there's also like Lower creature quality at three man on Pioneer. Uh, I guess Grease Fang would maybe probably maybe be a bit too good with Grease Fang. Yeah, there's Claimed Fame and there's also uh, the multicolor one. Dude, I tried to I tried to brew with the multicolor one in Modern for the longest time. Can't stay away. Why not Unearth Mage? They have it just doesn't do anything. Like with the Red and Six at this point, I have no pressure. I think I had to. Um, I think I had to uh, try to draw into like another season pyromancer or aggress there, or Coco. Or Aether Vile. <laughs> Should attack with Pyro and Hierarch? I mean, why would I ever attack with the 0 1 Hierarch in that spot? This hand's good, though. I said that I couldn't stay away from Can't Stay Away. I couldn't. They're like, so, like, I was just, like, I was waking up sweating, thinking about how <sighs> Rockrick is multicolor three-mana creature, Fulminator Mage is a multicolor three-mana creature, and then you can unearth Rock... Or can't Stay Away, Rockrick, Can't Stay Away, Fulminator Mage, Trigger Rockrick with Can't Stay Away, Collected Company into all of these. Clothis was, like, another kind of interesting uh, three-mana Can't Stay Away target. Uh, that was multicolor for General Rockrick, and I was just like, like to be honest, like the deck just needed Deathrite Shaman <laughs> to function. Uh, I I I believe that if the deck had access to Deathrite Shaman, it would have been uh, uh, maybe good enough. But uh, you know, maybe if your deck needs Deathrite Shaman, <laughs> you shouldn't have it. Okay, we go Unearth plus Hierarch now. Uh, probably getting basic swamp. Let's bet if I draw my one of run and six and they kill both creatures, which is pretty unlikely. Uh, 
Not to trigger exalted, maybe kill Pyro to unearth it. I don't know, man. I, I think that's probably in too deep. Dude, but Death Raid Shaman with General Rockrick, that would be so awesome. A 9 1 with the Ground Rift Death, that's awesome. Between the idea of placing Firewalkers aboard for Blossoming Calm to increase synergy with sideboard cards. Uh, I think that that's maybe correct. Um, although it's kind of like. Oh, Wish? Am I going to wish for Collector Oof? I guess it's awkward by Ragavan. Wish for Renin 6 here? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wish. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Though. That's a, that's an interesting idea for sure. <laughs> Side out the Renin 6s? To wish for them. Wish for Magus? Uh, maybe... I feel like I like the Ren a lot here. Why not wish for Magus? I mean, I'm missing my land drops without the Ren and Six. This Ren and Six is good against an opposing Ren and Six as I get to ping it. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I uh, need the Magus here. I can't ca if I ca if I get the Magus, then I'm not using the rest of my mana efficiently this turn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't cast the Magus. Yeah, I can't. I can't even cast it. <laughs> Dorver Mine Exiled. So we'll see if they want to pop the Relic here. I guess they'll just tap the Relic, actually. Oh, okay, they're not even doing that. I guess that's good for me. Um, so I'm just going to Kroxa and then Fulminator Mage. And I'm going to sack the Fulminator Mage in their upkeep in case they have a Veil of Summer. They don't get to draw the card. Ah, shit. Shit. <laughs> okay, I'll let the Ren 6 take 4. If they attack with it, it'll be fine. Yeah, spicy tech for Kroxa, huh? Do not have, there's no way they have Bailoth plus Fail of Summer, right? <laughs> Surely they don't have Obstinate Bailoth plus Bail of, Bail of Summer. Okay. Yeah, this is Obstinate Bailoth. Used to be a modern staple back when Liliana the Veil was like super popular and also like this red green Valakid deck was really popular, but it's a four mana, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four life, but if a spell or ability uh, an opponent controls would cause you to discard it, you can instead just put it into play instead of putting it into your graveyard. Classic card. Alright, so I think easy, just attack with Ragavan, trade Bailoth for Ragavan plus a Ridden Six Ping. No, another Ragavan to replay. I've already activated the uh, the Rin, so I think I'll just play the Tarmogoyve. Don't think I need the Thoughtseize this turn, but it probably pops the Relic, yeah. I did uh, get my basics this time around. <laughs> Dwarf Mine, no Dwarf Token for you. So let's go Veil of Summer, main phase one, to trigger the Goyve. They don't have the double green. I guess I take Soccer Tribe Elder because they draw basic forest and they get to cast a Titan. Attack them for eight. Ping with Ren and Six, play another Goyf. Tarmogoy no discard spells. Yeah, I was kind of wondering how good or bad the Tarmogoyce would be. I think with Seasoned Pyromancer. And we, do, we, we have Season Pyromancer, Planeswalkers, Instant Sorcery. I think the Goyfs are fine, but they're definitely not as powerful as they are in other Junt variants. 
Weird, weird league. Three two to first league of the day. I'm gonna run it back. I've been pretty happy with the seventy five. The leagues have been going really fast with it too. Got the anger of the gods Thor art. Oh, Ragavan exiled the forest. <laughs> That's funny. Ha <laughs> ha